Hi, I'm Tian Hui Cai, and I'm going to present you our work, Motion GPT, Human Motion Synthesis with Improved Diversity and Realism via GPT-3 Prompting. Human motion synthesis has vast potential applications in areas such as animation, gaming, robotics, medical research, and activity recognition. Traditional methods for human motion capture are both expensive and time-consuming, for they rely on data collection with costly and well-calibrated motion capture systems or wearable sensors, as well as human labor to perform, clean, and annotate the motion data. With the recent developments in generative modeling and natural language processing, it's now possible to directly generate motion sequences from natural language descriptions. This innovative approach minimizes human involvement and eliminates the necessity for expensive motion capture setups. As such, our work focuses on text-driven human motion synthesis, where the model takes a text as input, specifying the human motion, and generates a 3D human motion represented by SMPL parameters matching the input text. As a challenging task, Previous works encounters a trade-off between creating diverse and natural synthetic motions and maintaining precise control during the synthesis process. This trade-off is crucial, as we want the generating motion to align with the input text prompt, but too much control can restrict the diversity of generations and might produce unnatural motions. Additionally, there is the issue of generalization. Our model needs to generalize well to novel motions they are not seeing in the training data. This remains a significant problem, as ensuring our model can synthesize a wide range of unseen motions is essential for it to be truly versatile and reliable in practical applications. To address these challenges, we introduced Motion GPT, a doubly task conditional motion diffusion model that leverages the power of zero shot common sense inference from GPT 3. Our contribution can be summarized to three points. First, we propose the motion diffusion model condition on both high and low level descriptions for fine grained control over generated motions. Comparing to current state of the art approaches, which only has one high level task description input to condition the synthesis, we go a step further by integrating a low-level text condition, which specifies the individual actions that collectively form the motion stated in the high-level text description, thereby providing an additional layer of detail that guides the synthesis process. Second, we propose the zero-shot prompting method for GPT-3 to produce low-level details of high-level text, resulting in more motion diversity and better alignment with the training dataset. Third, our model reaches new state-of-the-art performance on the human ML3D benchmark in terms of FID metric and motion diversity. As a diffusion model, our denoisy network architecture is based on human motion diffusion model, MDM, and employs a transformer with four inputs, the training motion sample X, the encoding of the denoisy step index T, the positional embedding of the temporal ordering of the motion frames, and the conditioning token C. Unlike MDM, which only uses the clip embedding of the high-level text annotation as a conditioning vector, we also incorporate the embedding of its low-level variant and some their linear projections to form the conditioning token C. During training, for the high-level description, we use the ground truth from a human ML3D dataset, which contains text description of the motion being performed. For low-level text, we generate them by sorting and concatenating ground truth per frame labels from the Babel dataset. For inference, we use low-level text generated by GPT-3 according to the input high-level text. Here's a diagram of how we generate the low-level text using zero-shot prompting with GPT-3 during inference. By providing a prompt comprising a small number of in-context input target examples and an additional query input, the large language model can identify the patterns in examples and combine them with a pre-trained semantic information to generate the query output. In this work, we first retrieve the top k most similar training examples for each high-level text query in a test set. 
We accomplished this by pre-computing a dictionary D of high-level sentence T5 embeddings. Then during inference, we obtain the embedding of the high-level test query, calculates cosine similarity with the dictionary D, and retrieve the top K most similar high-level training text. Finally, we form pairs of the retrieved high-level text with their corresponding low-level counterparts from the training dataset and concatenate these pairs with a high-level test query to create the final prompt for GPT-3. Here is an example of the prompt generated by our method. With input high-level text query, a man crouches down while quickly walking forward and then stands up straight. These high-level and low-level pairs shown in a table are retrieved since the high-level text in these pairs are closest to the input query. The GPT-3 prompt is formed by concatenating the pairs and the input text query. GPT-3 then outputs a low-level text, crouch, walk, stand, which will be used as a low-level description for our inference. This approach has two benefits. Firstly, it increases the diversity of text prompts, resulting in a wider range of generated motions. Secondly, it allows for better generalization by achieving greater similarity to the training data distribution. To allow comparison with other works, we evaluate our method on a test set of human ML3D dataset. Two experiments were carried out. To analyze the best text encoder for the low-level description, we compared three text encoders, the Steelbird, SNST5, and MiniRM. To evaluate the prompting method, we compare a scenario where low-level descriptions is provided by Babel dataset against a second scenario where low-level description is generated by GPT-3 using the proposed prompting method. This is the quantitative results we obtained. It shows that our model performs better in terms of FID and diversity metrics while maintaining competitive R position, multimodal distance, and multimodality. Also, the experiments corroborate the validity of using GPT-3 to generate low-level descriptions, as the results are similar or better than using the ground truth low-level description from Babel dataset. The results also indicate that the Steelbird is a preferred encoder for low-level description in our framework. Here are some qualitative results of our motion GPT in comparison with the state-of-the-art method MDM. With the same high-level text prompt, greeting a friend, and different low-level prompts such as hawk, wave, and bow, it can be observed that MDM, which conditioned on concatenated high and low-level text prompts, generates poor quality motions, where our model conditioned on both texts yields consistent and good quality motions aligned with the text prompts. In the following three slides, we show some more qualitative results with different types of low-level text prompt. In this example, a man does a push-up and then uses his arms to balance himself back to his feet. We use low-level text prompt from the Bell dataset. The generated motion of motion GPT is complete and more natural. In this example, we use low-level text prompt that repeats a high-level text prompt, walk from side to side. The generated motion of our model better aligns with the text prompts. We also tested our model without specifying low-level text. In this example, a person flaps his arms quickly like a chicken. We use none as low-level text prompt. Our generated motion is still natural and aligns well with the prompt. Here are some additional qualitative results of motion GPT. One limitation of our work is that the diffusion model we used, though allowing for greater diversity, is very time-consuming. As such, long sentences are currently not handled well. We are going to address that in our future work. Thank you for watching.